fake gavel. Um, maybe our minutes first. We probably should. The minutes are being re are being uh, uh, retyped. Okay. There were some typos and there was missing information, so it's being retyped. So we'll approve them at a later date. Okay. Very good. So these are definitely draft. <laughs> Those will be. You'll get a new set okay. shortly. Thank you. Okay, that's all of that. All right, Mr. Hardy, um, welcome back. Thank you. Mm -hmm. you're feeling I'm glad you're feeling better. Thank you very much. I hope you don't mind that we went on without you. Uh, I'm glad. <laughs> we were concerned There's we so made much you sick. On. <laughs> we were concerned we made you sick. No, no, no. no. Um, certain places in Fania Hall, I won't eat any. <laughs> so I'm just that. Um, I, I did meet with uh, Paul. After your meeting, prior to the tonight, and he filled me in on, on the changes that the committee had made, but uh, there were some questions raised. Uh, so if, if it's okay, I'd like to start Absolutely. with that. Yep. So we can kind of put Section B to bed and move mm -hmm. on to C&D. The first one that came to our attention um, is BDF. which is advisory committees to the school committee. And the question was, why do we need this? We don't use these. Um, and we just used one not that long ago. Um, the superintendent search screening committee was an advisory committee to the school committee. So um, the purpose of this policy is if the committee wanted to establish a task force study group for a specific uh, charge, this would be the policy under which you would do that. Now, you don't need the policy to do that. You can still establish those right. committees without mm -hmm. it. But this just provides some guidance to the members of those type of advisory committees. Um, it's not required you have it, and if you're not in the typical practice of using advisory committees, maybe it's not necessary, but that's why it's there. Okay. okay. So we, I think we, we should, should, we should have it then. I think we didn't have a problem with it. Nope. We asked if it was necessary. I think that, that for us, because of the significance of advisory, mm -hmm. we really wanted to change to task force or search committee or just task force if that was generic enough. Because for us, advisory means something totally different. Okay. Now the finance committee is also it's called the advisory committee. So we didn't So want it's to really the, the nature of a task force. So we thought, gee, let's call it task force or um, okay. search committee is that, or whatever you want to, whatever you recommend. Does that work? I'll let him think that over. Yeah, but it is, it is an advisory committee that we're setting up to advise us on something. So mm -hmm. yeah. Advisory yeah. committees to yeah. the school committee. committee. indicates that it's a, it's a subgroup of the whole. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And that it's put and in place by be. the chairman or whatever, so. Consulting? Consulting committee? No. Mm -hmm. No. That, well, that might have a connotation. Yeah, that altogether paid. different. Um, How about just well, committees to the school committee then? No. 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 Well, it's it's clearly no explained, point. though, in I, this I policy. Explained. Here. I don't yeah, have so I think that if title. anybody has a question. If, with, if I come up with another word, I'll let you know. But I, I think if anybody reads it, the yeah, composition of task it. forces. Number one tells you what it is. Exactly. Advisory committees may be created by the school committee. Um, the next one is BDFA-E-1, which is the school improvement plan. Um, you delete it annually and changed it to every two years. Mm -hmm. um, the loss says that it has to be submitted annually. Oh, all right then. Okay. All right, then that's... Do what the law says then. Okay. And that's Mass yeah. General Law 71, Section 59C. Should we reference that down the bottom then? We I can. Think yes. we can. I think we better reference it. Can you repeat that reference? Which one is it? 71. Uh, School of BDFA. BDFA. E1. 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 School of Proven Plans. Okay. 7159C. And you'll reference. Um, okay. Yeah, the original said uh, in the first sentence preparing a school, a written school improvement plan annually. And the committee had changed it to every two years. Well, we do have two year plans, um, but they can be submitted annually. Mm -hmm. But it's a two year plan. That, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But they, that's there's the, an that's annual the, that's submission. That's what the difference is. You, I guess you, you have do need to, in other words, because you, you revise, you, you, you come back and you reevaluate yeah. it, and, and you and you so look at it again, just like you do with the CIP. But it's a two, year, it's a two-year plan that you uh, review in the off year. Okay. 
So we are two years two year plan mm -hmm. submitted e right. submitted annually. Yes. So it should people say that? I don't think it should. Well, just say no, no, annual. approval annual plan. plan. That way, if you change it to an annual plan, you don't have to go back or and rewrite your policy. Plan. All right. So what and will we do? Change the strategic plan so that it reflects that language, so we don't confuse people then. I don't think it, 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 I, I'm agreeing with him. No, I don't sorry, think it, it matters. Mm -hmm. It's a two-year plan. Uh, and, and if you leave it this way, it's, should you decide you don't like two-year plans and you want to go back to one-year plans, this only says you're submitting it every year. And, and, and Which we do. And both in the strategic plan and the district improvement plan and in the school improvement plans as they, as they will be submitted to you, um, all say that they come back and submit it once a year anyway, so mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. Then the other question was on the uh, 7A and B. Yeah. There was a question after the word and. Mm -hmm. there, was, there wasn't anything left off. It's a continuation, um, except that A and B. Mm -hmm. Oh, I get oh. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't anything missing after the word and. Okay. Right. We have budget policy written in. Well, it was, it was a question, and yeah. I think it was a, is that what should be there, so. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> so we take um, that out. Right. Okay. Uh, on the next page, uh, E-2, um, the uh, the February 1st time is an arbitrary date we put in as a placeholder. You would, you should put in the date you do it. Okay. If it floats, then simply put annually. Why so some that? years it's March, some years yeah. it's April, some put years it's May. Yeah. That way it's the, and approval which. annually. Yes. Yes. Take out by very fresh. Right. Yes. Just put and approve annually. Okay. Or renew um, and approval by annually. You can leave it annually. Right. Okay. And the other question was on number six. Um, was does this need to be here if I am covered in district improvement improvement plan? Um, and again, it's the, the school improvement plan should reflect the district improvement plan. Okay. So totally it, it's just it's a tie-in to the district S improvement plan. Okay. Okay. So leave it there. And that's that's one of your core values. Right. Okay. It's the last one. It's E under communication and collaboration. Okay. And so by its very nature, it involves everyone else. And I guess the last sentence: If the school committee does not does not review the school improvement plan within 30 days of its receipt, the plan shall have been deemed as approved. Again, that comes out of the that comes out of the law. Yeah. So, do you want to cite, we'll cite the law? We'll cite the law on that yep. one too. <coughs> and it's the same. 7159C. Okay. okay. On um, E3, the next page. Um, it's the second to the. It's the last paragraph. Mm -hmm. The, the superintendent shall receive agendas and minutes of all the school committee meet, uh, school council meetings. Shall provide copies of these materials to members of the school committee for information. And usually, what we do is to simply say upon request. Okay. Yeah. yeah which paragraph there? Well, the both of them should have on, on request. The superintendent receiving all those minutes on re upon request, so, and the school committee receiving them upon request. To all school um, committee member inf for information upon you mean request. That not yeah, the, the minutes should be sent yeah. to, to, to the central sent. office because that's where mm -hmm. you're, you're, that's you're considered the, the the house for all public records. Yeah, we don't have we don't have them. They they yeah. they retained in each one of the buildings and they're they're accessible, but they're retained at each one of the buildings. So yeah, I don't have any place to store them. Okay, that's what I'm just coming down to. Um, just the, for minutes of the meeting. Okay, um, I see what you're saying. Um, but wouldn't it be nice to have them in the central office for yes. all the schools so that if anyone but wants again, to have the access? Question is, you say space, space is an issue, so where do you put them? How about electronic copies? Well, I mean, they don't take any space electronic, on the Provided that that's how, they're, that's how they're generated, but I don't, I can't promise you that. You're writing policy right now. Right. Um, so, you know, if we can say it's electronic, right. sure, we could create a file. Um, and just keep them, but right now they're, they're just person. retained. Yeah, they're just retained at each one of the buildings. So if you ask me for the boroughs um, uh, minutes from their school council meeting last week, I would call to the borough and say, "Send me your 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 school council meetings." But well, since we're setting a policy, happen. couldn't we require them to um, furnish them electronically? 
that would be good. I just don't know who they have established as secretaries for their competency with well, let's uh, see if they can do typing it. things up. So I don't want to step on any toes. Well, we can. Right, that's another way to go. Paul just suggested they also could be scanned and saved as a PDF. Okay. So even if someone didn't, if they typed it by hand, you could still scan it in and send it in electronically. Yeah. Okay. So it would be better to try to maintain them electronically than to maintain them as paper. Okay. Okay. Right. It just it just it drives home the point that at some point Paul should do a presentation to the school committee um, on all of our backup and recovery procedures to be comfortable that all this electronic stuff we're storing doesn't somehow get lost someday. So we should be comfortable that the right controls are in place regarding that. Paul is a culpable lawyer. Yes, that's correct. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't probably do it. Gee, lucky like you. I mean, we're going to have to morph him. I know, he's he's, I know he's so watching. Many jobs. Well, obviously, I ask school, the school, the individual okay. school, to keep a hive copy it's, it's so that if something happens. Yeah. On task. Yeah. Uh, the next one was uh, school attorney. Um, and the question was that protocols allow individual school me members to access school counsel. Um, the only reason the, the language is written as such um, in that an individual school committee member cannot incur mm -hmm. a cost without authorization of the school committee. So mm -hmm. every time an individual member calls the school attorney or general counsel, mm -hmm. it takes a little bit more of the retainer that right. is right. on there. And if five of you are calling on the same issue, yeah, that's it's that's times five mm -hmm. the, the cost. Yeah. And, what, and that is um, directly related to the, you know, the, the fact that you, you can't, as an individual member, incur a cost and expect the school district to pay for it. I guess the question that we were discussing is, let's say you're a minority member of the committee. Mm -hmm and you believe that we need a legal opinion. Okay. As a minority member, if the committee votes no, we're not going to seek that, what's your recourse as a, as a member of the committee? You could uh, request through the Board of Selectmen access to the Town Council. So what we're trying to decide is how do we protect the right of the minority yeah. member or members and, of the committee? You know, quite honestly, this is a democracy and majority rules. May not like it, but that's that's a fact. Um, if it's a four-one vote not to seek a legal counsel, that's it. That's the end of it. Even a three-two. Oh, the right. two of the two. Yeah. Yeah. If you were to if you were then if the committee said no and you were then to contact legal counsel, you're, you're actually now operating outside the scope of a school committee member right. because the committee spoke. The committee took a position. Right. right. But okay. you could go to the selectmen and request. And request because you can't call mm -hmm. town council, town council on without permission. Without permission. Without permission so. Okay. That's I think that clarity is important, though, for yeah. us to hear. Okay. Uh, you just, you know, if, you, if your protocol allows it to happen yeah. now, then what it really should be is that if, if someone if someone makes a request for legal opinion, that it's you, you do the you do the you know, respectful thing and grant the permission to mm. seek the legal opinion. That, that might be a transition piece, but that's going to be in your practices, not necessarily your policies. Well, and, and I, the reason, part of the reason why it came up is that, um, you know, over the last year, um, multiple members have had conversations with the town council, our school council, yep. and um, uh, the discussion was how do we make it fair that if, since we're all theoretically equal members of the school mm -hmm. committee, if a minority member felt very strongly that the committee was potentially um, stepping in illegal areas and the rest of the committee said, nope, we think we're fine, not being attorneys, that minority member uh, could turn out being right, but if mm -hmm. the majority could silence the minority, was that appropriate and is that what we wanted mm -hmm. to do? So that was kind of some yeah. of the discussion mm -hmm. we had around it. But whatever we decide, we, we have to finalize and agree and then implement so that we're consistent. Well, if, that's, if this spells it out, yeah. so be it. Okay. Personally, I just I think you always go through the chair, yeah. and if there's disagreement, there are other options because the minority person, the minority um, uh, vote can has an opportunity to state it publicly and has the opportunity to, to notify the selectmen. So mm -hmm. I'm I'm sure um, I'm sure it would get taken care of. 
Um, BEC, which is executive session. Um, I guess the comment was number three. On the top of the bottom. Uh, on the bottom, I'm sorry. Uh, strategy with respect to collective bargaining litigation. If any, and a, the comment, should contract negotiations also be included? Mm -hmm. That's what that is. Right. Yeah. I don't think that's what it's Collective bargaining is contract negotiations. Yeah. And but it could be what about union? That's union. Well, it's collective bargaining. It's, 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 it's bargaining um, for union or, or even non-union personnel. So that's that collective, collective, bargaining. collective bargaining would cover non-union yes. personnel? That's the same. Mm -hmm. It's the same exemption. It covers both. Yes. Okay. So th this is where we need somebody to help us interpret what they need. So this covers both. So it stays. Okay. <coughs> um, and then on number nine, they said to meet or confer with a mediator and or return in or these are um, this is the language out of the open meeting law. So I'm really hesitant to make changes to right. the language really that's contained okay. within statute. Yep. They use mediator okay. for the purposes of mediation or, or, or uh, that, that type of process. You, yeah. you always have the ability to talk to your attorney in regards to the other exemptions. Right. But just to go into executive session for the purposes of talking to your attorney yeah. without a subject matter, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. A mediator would mean that you're going in to resolve a conflict, and you, you've hired a mediator to do that. One of the things that that I think would be helpful um, is on in our in our agendas, we'll often say executive session, and that's it. And so anyone who gets the agenda in advance gets it off. Kings comes mm -hmm. to the meeting; they don't know what the purpose of the executive session is until the meeting. If the chairman knows that we're going to go into executive session for any one of these nine reasons. Why not just put it on the on the um, agenda so that someone who gets the agenda knows that the executive session is to discuss discipline or strategy or deployment of security, whatever it might be, rather than having to wait till the night of the meeting. And you can always, um, you know, not have the executive session because of the reason. Mm -hmm. But but if we're going to put executive session, why not just be a little bit more specific in the in the agendas? It's up to you. That's that's, that's it. That's the local. personal, the local yeah. Yeah. school right. committee. I mean, does, does anybody on the committee object to that, or? No, I think it adds for more openness, so that right. people more you know, transparency. Yeah. The only thing would be is if it's if it's under number one and number two, there's there's notice requirements that you have Correct. to give. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So to the individuals. Yeah, right. 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 Yeah. And the other question, number nine, was uh, or public business, and the question was why public business. Um, mm -hmm. If you were in mediation over the purchase of land, uh, or a lease of a building. Uh, trying to come, and that's not necessarily litigation. Right. Um, so that's why public business, business is put this, and you can actually, if you were trying to negotiate a lease for a facility or a contract, not, not contract, bad example, right. but something other than um, litigation. Right. I think the, the issue with the public business, the, the, the document actually gives you the ex almost the exact same example you right. just did so that the reader understands right. it. Where it just says in the policy public business, we felt it could be confusing to someone who picks up the policy manual. And so that's why we thought you know the example would be more helpful. Okay. But uh, let's see. The next one was B E D B, which was agenda format. Format or preparation. Um, Oh, yeah, this we, is well, we changed the title. The title. I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm, I'm, you are here. We changed the title. He's already changed the title <laughs> for me. Yeah. All right. Um, and you have uh, agendas shall be posted at the town hall and school webpage prior to. Right. So what is it? Is I'm, I'm not sure. Yes. We currently yeah, post the agendas at town hall yeah. and, and, um, and on the website. So all we were trying to do, I think, was, was the to question on this be consistent. Um, well, we were trying to figure out how far in advance. Oh, okay. But then when you and I talked. But you uh, know you're not required to post agendas anywhere. We are not required, oh, not required to post an agenda. Right. Just what you're required to do is post, is, the is notice. A posted notice, which right. is who, which committee is meeting, right. the date you're meeting, the time you're meeting, the place you're meeting. Right. That's what's required. Right. Now, as part of community... Communication, communication. You are posting your agendas. Right. Now, 
You can say agenda shall be posted at the Town Hall and School webpage, period. And when they're done and they're ready, I know that agenda for next next week's meeting is already on your webpage. Right. So. So that's under communication. We choose to do you that. You choose to do that. Right. It's not. It's, I guess my it's point was it's, it's not required. Me. You do that. That's something you're doing over and above. Right. Now to understand that by posting your agenda, it makes it difficult to change something at the last minute. Why can't you post it as a draft agenda? Oh, you can. I mean, they could, always be marked, right. they could always be marked draft. But when shouldn't you, if you that, put it up. because we can, sometimes an emergency will occur. Sometimes or something will happen. You, you well, can, but then you put it under other matters. So. You can, yeah. It's, you couldn't, it'd be harder to add it as a specific agenda item. You'd have to bring it in under new business or other under matters. matters or something like that. Okay. But is there a problem with just having draft on it? Nope. So I would suggest that we just post it like we do now and put draft on it. And it gets finalized uh, on Monday evening if there's, a, you know, maybe out of, Twenty nights, only one times it changes, but I have no problem with that. Yeah. May I ask? I am now confused. What is the correct heading for this? Um, it's agenda format. Okay. So we'll leave it the way it is. Well, I had agenda preparation. Yeah, so. Right. It right. used to be agenda preparation. All right. So agenda format is the correct title. Yep. Thank you. Um, and then the, the, the question on BEDB-E, -E, right. which one says order of business, which is the Foxborough, or the other says it, we couldn't, Paul couldn't tell from which, his notes, which one you adopted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I think it's because we wanted all of them. <laughs> I think we got back down. Well, maybe that was part of it, is that there was a yeah, they wanted to get, was, yeah, we wanted to combine. In, in, in what order would you? This is BEDB-E. We, we, uh, do the minutes, how did you visit us? Oh, no, we visit us first. We do visit us first. Yeah. So what we were saying is, why don't we just take one of a, a couple of well, our so actual agendas our agenda. and put it in the format that That's our real right. agenda is. Yeah. All right, like. so if I could just get it. An agenda or two. This was a question that I had. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, on the, uh, on the agenda format, um, how does a member get an item on the agenda if the chair keeps saying no to an item? Right. Yeah. You bring, you appeal the chairman's, the, through Robert's rules, you can appeal the, ch decision, ch the decision of a chair at a meeting. So you would simply make a motion to override the chairman's decision to get something on the agenda. If someone seconds it, you get a majority vote. It's on the agenda. Can we put that in the in the policy then, so that somebody knows that? We can. Why we can you put a reference down the bottom? Yeah. yeah. You can reference Robert's rules for yeah. that section. Okay, reference Robert's rules. I mean, I don't think, at least in the last year, that's ever been an issue. But well, who knows in future committees if it's policy? Right. Right. Okay. So they can appeal. Yes. To the committee. Yeah, the, you can always, the there's always the appeal. Robert's Rules always allows for appeal of appeal, the chairman's decision. Appeal, a second, and a vote. Someone has to make a motion, has no, to get we'll seconded, and then you Three have votes. to carry a majority vote. Okay. Okay. So. BEDD, Rules of Order. And the question was, should a summary of Robert's rules be added to policy or, say, a copy is distributed to each member? A summary, no. The summary would be, I mean, Robert's rules are 476 pages. The summary would be <laughs> 30 pages long. Um, keep having a copy distributed to each member. At a minimum, just the little pocket card. Yeah, right. Everyone should have that. It should always be as practice um, a copy of your policy manual and Robert's rules at every meeting. Just as a practice, and as a chair, you might want to always have one in your bag. Yeah. Policy manual and a copy and of Massachusetts General Law. Well, the pink book. No, I'm serious. Yeah. The pink book. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess it's not going to be pink next when it comes out again. It's going to be actually so, a full little pocket one. A what color? A full color. It's a picture of the state. I think I've got one. Sorry, a little, the short version. All right, well, we should uh, have the little pocket cards. Yeah. I yeah. can bring some the next okay. meeting. I get okay. stacks of them. Okay. Okay. Oh, that'd be great. Let me write that down so I don't. Yeah. 
Well, I've been doing a little checking on that bookcase, and I'm not well, sure it's safely there. It's a matter of retrieving it. I might be doing this too. I think I'm going to push it. Okay, we have to. Know. Okay. Uh, let's see. Under BEDDC, conduct and responsibilities of members at official meetings. Um, the there's a paragraph deleted. All statements read at official school committee meetings by committee members shall be statements authorized in or endorsed by the entire committee. This does not apply to statements which are read to clarify a motion under discussion. All statements read at official school committee meetings must by committee members shall be statements authorized and or endorsed by the entire committee. That is like a direct violation of the freedom yeah. of speech. Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that's why we have a question. That's that's right. Isn't that why we that's agreed why to eliminate it? Yes. 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 Right. Clarify yeah. Yeah. that was a good thing <laughs> to take out of your policy. Well, aren't we did good while you were on. I was going to say, we, we did that all by ourselves. <laughs> so we really don't need... No, that, that paragraph you don't is definitely just take up the flies in the face of reason. Yes, right. Okay, but we still are going to have B E D D D. Yes, and then well B E D D C, right? Yeah, the rest of it's a different is, one. Oh wait a minute, how much responsibilities? Oh, members and 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 a three member, a three, uh, the vote to suspend parliamentary rules of order. We took out two thirds, and you wrote three member vote. Right. Because uh, two thirds is four fifths. Mm -hmm. um, and that's and again, Roberts rules is a guideline. Right. To suspend Roberts rules typically requires a two thirds vote. If you look in Roberts rules. Right. However, you can set local rules that supersede Roberts rules because it's a guidebook. Right. But we couldn't have two thirds. With five members, sure you can four fifths. Well, that's yeah. right. So you have to have four members. Yeah. So it happens yeah. to be always four a four to one vote. Right. So that's yeah. why we say we ought to just make it four votes instead of two thirds. Well, it's more. Yeah, it's going to be. Yeah, you got to round out two thirds. Right. So how are we going to? Well, what we pass things on three three, 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 fifth, three fifth vote is sixty percent. It's not two. It's not sixty six point or sixty seven percent. Right. It's not two thirds. Four fifths is eighty percent. So it, it meets the standard for two thirds vote. So sometime also called supermajority. Yeah. Right. So how how will we how do we think this should read? I mean, if you wanted to stay with the two thirds standard, then you can say a four fifths vote will be required. Right. Which is what which is practically what. It which has is to what be. you'd have to have anyway. Four members would Except have. Except if someone's absent. Right. Then mm -hmm. three would do it because that would be seventy five percent. By saying a four-fifths vote, you'll always need four votes to, to suspend okay. the rules, even okay. though three might be a quorum. Okay. So that's, you know, you start thinking about the different consequences. Right. So if there was only three for your quorum, you only needed two to? Two-thirds would suspend the rules. Okay. All right. So what are we going to do with this? We're going to stay with the two-thirds, it sounds okay. like. Yeah. Leave the two-thirds. So. In the event that there's a vacancy. Someone passes yeah. away and there's only four members. Then it would be a unanimous vote all the time. Right. So does that mean we can't pass things three to two? Well, actually, if there was no, a no, no, vacancy, no, 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 this no, is no, to no, suspend. No, if there was oh, a just, vacancy, to suspend. Three, right. three, to four, suspend you could Robert's do a three-fourth vote. Because yeah. a, va a vacancy is a non-filled seat. Okay. If somebody was just absent because right. they couldn't get there, it would be. Um, there's a question on minutes, BEDG, that Martha brought up. This has been a, um, an ongoing issue on minutes, and I just wanted us to go over this policy. The, I have, the, there was a note, there was a change on the last paragraph that approved minutes would be posted on the school website. Right. We put them on the website right. now. No, no, it's just that we've gotten a lot of controversy about how much or how little we put in the minutes, mm -hmm. and mainly because of the meeting that I went to with you guys down in Mask, and, and you went over um, what we really needed to do with our minutes and that we really didn't have to get into a lot of verbiage. And well, 
the, the, the enforcing agencies have repeatedly said that minutes do not need to be a, a reflection of every single word said, but they need to reflect the flavor and the substance of the discussion that was held okay. on each topic. So you can't just simply said we met uh, at, you know, we opened the meeting at this time, we talked about a bunch of things, and we closed the meeting at this. That would not be sufficient. You have to have more substance than that. So that's why I say complete uh, tech, official actions taken by the committee relative to any recommendations, communication, business transact, resolutions, motion, are exact worded, um, and then um, reports, documents related to formal motion, maybe a bit if they're referred to and identified by title and date, right. or if they're attached. You don't need okay. to put the entire document in there. All right, and when but you look the, the, at, when you read Massachusetts General Law as to what you actually need to put in there, your note on the bottom, specific comments and or discussion should only be included in the minutes as a result of a vote of the committee. The minutes are not a transcript of the meeting. Audio and videotapes of meetings may serve the purpose of preserving a record of discussions. They do not, however, have to be reflected in the minutes. Right. You know, it's just that our minutes have gotten quite long. Okay, and it's the hard part is, as a committee member, and I feel very strongly, after having sat at a meeting for three or four hours, mm -hmm. I'm not going to go home and watch it again mm -hmm. to make sure that every word is accurate. I, I just, and yet when you get the minutes, they're so long and so involved, is it really necessary? Mm -hmm. Well, I think that the point he's made is that they need to reflect the flavor of the discussion. Right. So if certain members voice their support for it and certain members voice their opposition for it and they have their opportunity, it would seem the minutes should reflect the flavor of that discussion, not just there was a motion made to do something and the committee voted three to two, four to but one, five to zero. But it also doesn't have to say verbatim. so and so said Correct. quotation. Right. Boom, yep. and then so and so responded with quotation. Correct. It can paraphrase yes. the so it could paraphrase it in such a way to from a posterity standpoint to reflect the discussion. Hey, that think took about place. it. You're going you know, five years from now, are you gonna be able to read the minutes and get a sense of what would what went right. on in that meeting? That's that's the general rule of thumb. That's the rule of thumb. And couldn't I mean to for the minutes to be more succinct too, couldn't we use the agenda items? Each each specific category that we have, each agenda item and then a discussion or a, or a you know, to reflect a a shortened paragraph from right. each of those agenda items instead of all these multiple paragraphs that we have detailing these lengthy discussions because our meetings do run, like Martha said, you know, mm -hmm. three hours at a time. So, um, I mean, who here is going to sit and watch that meeting over again for three or four hours? Wendy. Wendy, right. That's what Wendy yeah. does. Yeah. She's eating up a, eating up a lot know, which of one, which secretarial one, time. How many of us sit there and then meet her? Watching, that's Watch her, her separate yeah. yeah. job. I mean, it, to me, well, the, um, it, it, again, let's, let's, not, yeah. let's not get off track to the, to, to the you're, doing, you're doing well above the standard yeah. that's required of you. Right? If, if you so think that's, that's our choice If you think that you've, you've made that choice to do that, if you want to continue to do that, fine. There's, there's nothing, no problem with that. What this is reflecting is the, is the minimum standard. Well, it, this is the standard. This is the expectation okay. that what your minutes should have in it. If you want to go above the expectation, fine. If you want to drop a, you know, okay. come somewhere in between instead of being at the far end of the spectrum, you want to come back mm -hmm. a little bit, play with it. See, see what works works best for you. Okay. okay. Because we, are, we do have now a copy of the, of the meeting. Well, see, in, in the spirit of, of um, of candidness, um, the controversy surrounded a set of minutes that said, after much discussion, the committee did something. And it did not provide the flavor of the right. much discussion. Right. Right. Th those and so are, that's yeah. where those we're Those are the type of phrases that get. Right. So what we do. have to do is be able to find a way to yeah. not make them too burdensome, mm -hmm. but at the same point, reflect the flavor of the discussion yeah. that took place. You see, during the discussion on topic whatever, the following points were made. Mm -hmm. Right. And you can Period. list the, the key them. points that yeah. that came out but of that But they don't discussion. have to be. He said, she said. No. That's just correct. What was okay? okay right. Perfect. Right. Yeah. Okay. Could we could we use this? Leave this note. Um, yes. I'd, I'd like leave to that add. note in. There. All right. Okay. I would like to leave the note in, and I would like to leave it um, highlighted the way it is. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, my recommendation. The next one, BEDH, public participation at school committee meetings. Um, Can my I question a was on number three. All questions get posed or posted to the school committee during a meeting must be presented before the start of the school committee meetings. Subsequent to the meeting, all questions will be answered. What does subsequent to the meeting mean in your eyes? Well, what we were taught, the, the discussion we had. Number three on BEDH. Mask Under source. Under mask. Under source. And Up for mask. The discussion we were having is that um, what, what I said is in the visitor's section, um, I believe that it should be two-way dialogue, not one. So if a visitor comes and reads a statement to the committee that he's, he or she's asking for X, Y, Z, whatever it might be, the committee may not be prepared that evening to discuss it or to give an answer, but that I felt that, that any citizen that raises a question at the meeting and prepares it and hands it to us in writing, mm -hmm. we have an obligation to answer them. Um, so that's why we said, but we may not be able to answer it that night. We may need to research and study okay. it so the answer would come subsequent. So we weren't trying to debate whether it's one week, two weeks, three weeks, but the fact that, that we owe the that we there's an obligation on the part of the committee to respond to a to a question okay. that might be asked. All right. I just I just wanted to make sure I understood what what your point was. Right. That's all. Yep. Okay. Okay. The other thing we wanted to um, put in here that if someone comes and they read a statement, we want to make sure that it's copied, distributed to us, and to the public. Public, just like that. we do. Be because sometimes if somebody's got a lengthy, yep. it, it's very hard to follow. Right. And in all fairness, you know, you can't. That's right. You're thinking about other things. You're paying attention, but after a while, it kind of gets, you know, well, lost. So I, I which think is anybody. The, the, the changes made to number eight. Right. Okay. Right. Because it's also seven, easier to take seven. notes while they're talking if you have in front of you what right. they're speaking. Right. Absolutely. Speaking about. So written and what was made number seven. Back yes. on number two, we changed because we've allowed five minutes to present the material. Yeah, just four minutes. Uh, but should there be something in here that specifically says that? What you're talking about is during the visitors section. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, actually, I wanted to include anybody who has anything that they're going to read. I want to copy before so that we can have it. It also makes it easier for the minutes, Jim, because because then we can attach it to the minutes. Right, and that way, there, the secretary's not uh, criticized for not paraphrasing what they yeah. said correctly. Um, by attaching so, it, they're allowed to. They're part of the record. All right. So in number one, we need to to identify it's the visitors that during the visitors portion. Right. Yeah. In the visit, just a bit. Which number is that going under? One. One. The end of the first sentence. Right. All right. Now, do we want to change it from three minutes to five minutes? Because... We said three minutes isn't very long. Is it very yeah. long? Right. I thought we changed it to five. I thought we right. The too. problem is, is that you start having four or five people reading three, reading three or four three different or four. things. We've not had that problem. I know, but I'm just saying it, it, anything's possible. They can always vote to change the policy. Well, yeah. <coughs> you can also ask also them to, if they're all speaking to the same position, you can ask them to have, a, you know, have one person read and then the others can submit their written. Okay. Right. We can also, I mean, the only time the school committee can do their work as, is at the open meeting. If it gets to the point where people just want to talk and rancor, we may have to have an extra meeting for an open forum and just let them right. talk. Right. Which, which, but which, it's the right. this is the only time right. that we can get our business done, and they, which they actually should have a it's, respect it's, for not inhibiting us from getting our business which is, done. Which leads me to the next page, which was special procedures for conducting hearings. Which okay. would be those mm. type of public forums. Right. And the question was, do you need it? No, you don't need it. But if you wanted to have a public forum, this yes. is the protocol yes. you follow yes. to have the public forum. Yeah. yeah, the word forum just presents a different thought to me than hearing. hearing. Okay. So I like the word forum better than hearing. I do too. No problem. So yeah. for or are these these special meetings or these for conducting forums instead yeah. of meetings. Good. Yeah. So we'll say conducting public forums. Right. Okay. For conducting. Okay. Yeah. So what did we change on the BEDH? Five, three to five minutes. Yeah. Okay. Um, adding five visitors minutes. portion of the agenda to number one. Okay. And asking a copy and, and of then the about statements the going. Comments. Right. We want we Martha want. wanted that. 
We want copies. 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 We made available to us. It must be presented to the committee before, <coughs> yeah. The committee and the public. Eight. They have yeah. to make copies yeah. for the public as well. Okay. They ask what number is that going to be under? It's going to be number eight. It's going to be an added. Okay. Eight. Okay. Okay. So then we're all set on the next one. <coughs> um, then we have BGF, School Committee Suspension of Policies. And again, this is the three out of five vote again. So go back to two thirds. Right here. Okay. Yeah. And the next page is BHC. And also BGD. Right. And I just wanted to point out that there are there will be a few policies that have these dual codes on them. Mm -hmm. It yep. just simply means that the same policy is going to be in both places. Okay. So when we get to section G, this is what you'll see, the exact same language that's that's here. Okay. okay? And what we have to Because of the you look at the title, it's school committee staff right. communication. So it, that we'll needs put to one be in the staff point. too. Right. Mm -hmm. So that this right. Yeah, and what we emphasized here is all communication uh, is supposed to go through the superintendent. We're not supposed to call the principals of any of the schools and request information directly right. to them. Right. Right. Um, <coughs> BIA new school committee member orientation. Um, the question was, do you need the date that the law went into effect? Um, in here, um, probably not, but I, I'd probably leave it there for a little while longer because if somebody, say, comes back and is elected to the committee who was on the committee before 2002, then, I, I mean, if, say you got off the committee and then came back on again, yeah. this still wouldn't apply to you because oh, okay. you served on the committee prior to 2002. Prior to, okay. So it's only if you're elected for the first time after 2002. So I guess so it's up to you. I mean, leave it. Leave it. And the last one was the um, member compensation expenses BID. Mm -hmm. and, and you're right. This is so confusing to read, um, but we can certainly make it reflective that yeah, to Foxborough. Okay. Right, and, and, and we said that there's we can't incur any expenses for flowers or food or anything in a, for a person who passes away or anything else. We'll pay for um, that personally. Well, no one person can go ahead and go buy the flowers and then build a committee for them. Right. We can't um, build the town for it either. Even, even if the school committee either. doesn't have the authorization right. to commit the funds for the school to pay for. So That's correct. if we do it, we will all do it collectively or individually. Right, because... That, that's a that's a DOR right, issue. Correct. Uh, right. Use of public funds for gifts and right. So we, we had that issue last year. Okay. We've got it all taken care of now. Okay. So this is going to be rewritten. Yeah. Well, we Foxborough simply say the Foxborough, the, the school committee in Foxborough will serve without compensation. Um, no member of the committee will be eligible for. You know, you can't be a teacher in Foxborough if you're on the school committee, right? Right. Can, can I ask you a question? If you were elected to the board, could you then become a teacher? No. no, neither way. And is that a state or just a Fox it's a state law? It's a state law, okay. Can't be a teacher or a superintendent. Mm. Doesn't yeah, say anything no. about principal. Yeah, funny. <laughs> wow. Uh, the way it's written here is exactly how it's written in the statute. No member of school committee at any time shall be eligible to the position of teacher or superintendent of public schools. So you're not even eligible, which means you can't even apply. You're not eligible mm -hmm. if you're on the school committee already. And that was the last of the questions that were raised during my meeting with Paul. Does anybody else have anything? I think we covered it. All right. Moving on. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> I had to watch the meeting six times. I won't get sick anymore, Paul, I promise. <laughs> All right, go on. Okay. Section C, which is uh, everything to do with general school administration. CA, um, as I pointed out, each of our sections starts off with some sort of goal, goal statement, goal objective uh, for that section as well as for the category in which it 
comments, questions? What do you, you refer to in the second paragraph at the end, um, Chief Administrative Officer, and we're appropriate by the Superintendent and the School Committee. We don't actually have a position called Chief Administrative Officer, do we? Well, it's referred by, reviewed by the Chief Administrative Officer concerned. So it might be principal, it might be sped director, depending on so what So you're the referring that as a generic right. title. It's not capitalized. Okay. Right. So it's the, I guess so the, we add maybe the, word the better word would be appropriate administrator. Okay. Yep. Versus Chief Administrative yes. Officer. Right. Yep. All right. So it'll say here appropriate administrative officer. Rather than Chief Administrator. Just Administrator. Yeah. No. Administrator. By the Administrator yeah. Officer. No, the Administrator. Just the Appropriate, appropriate Administrator. administrator. Okay, so take out Chief and take out Officer. And then that? No. Over. And take out Administrative and change it to Administrator. So it just now says Appropriate Straight Administrator. Straight mm -hmm. And then the last paragraph would also have to change again where it says Administrative yeah. Officer. Yeah, that's right. So each Administrator. Perfect. Good. Okay, done. Approved. Uh, school superintendent. Obviously, we're talking about the one on the top, not the bottom. Right. Do we have to keep the bottom one in? No. 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 All right, want to take it out then? Yep. Yes. Thank you. And obviously, deleting mayor out of the second to the last line. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, do we need to say um, by February 1st? And the only reason that we have had we've spent considerable money both on uh, to the school attorney and town council because of our bylaws that there was some question, in particular in a year where we had um, difficult t t tight budget constraints, uh, the selectmen wanted us to move up our budget time frame, mm -hmm. and we said no, we couldn't and wouldn't. And again, considerable amount of monies were spent by our school attorney and also town council to determine that, yes, according to the Foxborough bylaws, the school committee um, is, is due, um, our budget is due into the advisory on or by February 1st, and we're required to have a public hearing, which we usually have the very end of January. So I'm not sure why you, we're not referring to the budget anywhere in here, just no. Yeah, where's no. the date that you Oh, you know why? I, because I put in the committee's annual report to the selectmen. That is our budget, is it not? No. No. Okay. No. That's so, the one that's printed in the town report? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. I know I missed it. So, but keep that in mind when we get to Section D. Uh, I yeah. did. Because <laughs> you have it in December. Right? Yeah, yeah. We're not going to waste money it's, ever again. It's, an, it's a date. We've been there, done that. It's February 1. <laughs> okay. um, job description. This, this one was dated 1987. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know when the last time it was updated. Um, it's probably something you should start thinking about doing. Right. And I don't know if you want to keep it in here or you want to keep it in a book with all the other job descriptions the district I think has. It's, I don't think it belongs in here. I think it's a job description should go in, in, in a job description book, I think, will be developed. Paul, we don't have one now, do we? No. no. So we take, I'm going to take this out of a policy book and put yeah. it in the job description. Go the job description. Where it this belongs, be right? Okay. Okay. Is that appropriate? And yes. then what we could do as a committee is we could work with Chris when he comes on board to actually revise well, his yeah. job description. And, and if there, yeah, we probably should do it is if job descriptions haven't been reviewed in a while, you probably should look at all of them. Right. Mm -hmm. Superintendent's contract. Okay. okay. Evaluation of the superintendent of schools. Uh, then there's the evaluation of the superintendent, which is the MASC version. Right. One, um, of, one of the things that Beverly brought up um, at one of our earlier meetings is the the, the process that, um, that Chris used in, in framing him is a fairly formal process, and that you would suggest maybe we adopt something similar to that. Very similar to that. It's, it's inclusive. Um, it's exact. But if it's, it's a tool that we're going to use and we have to sit with him and make sure that we correct. agree with it. But, um, so. but I was very impressed. He came He came with three um, sets yeah. of evaluations, yeah. and I liked them so much that it's 
Well, our version of the policy would, like would allow to you to incorporate that. any tool. Mm -hmm. So we're better off. I would suggest it for policy purposes. Yeah. That you Get keep rid of the open. Yeah. Let okay. him bring it in and say what okay, this is right. the format yeah. looks yeah. like. Um, the old so get rid of Fox Bros. Yeah. Yeah. Do we want to have that in our program? No, no, time no, because the timeline is going to be developed as part of the evaluation. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so, okay, and there's also a timeline in this contract, right? Okay, um, no time. for, for evaluation and that this his contract deals with his evaluation, absolutely. Mm -hmm. One is that, uh, thank you, the policies in the past have cited mass general law, but this one in particular that talks about the suit evaluation system it does not cite Because it's not, there's no there statute, no, there's that, no statute. Right. it's not grounded on statutes. There are regulations, though, that would apply to this. And I noticed that throughout the policy manual, the applicable regulations are, there's no mention of regulations. So one, uh, was that something that should be included as a reference in the policy? You do that. There is regulation because it specifically states in the regulation that, um, and that would be the 603 CMR, the 35 series, mm -hmm. specifically that the superintendent needs to construct an evaluation tool that is consistent with the document that says that the uh, principles of effective administrative mm -hmm. leadership. And I think that's what largely what Mr. Marcus is instrument right. the approximates. Um, but perhaps a reference to that would be appropriate because as yeah. I understand it, regulations are requirements as well. Mm -hmm. We can't use them as choose to use them or not to use them. Mm -hmm. It's a requirement. But again, the, the putting the rep, putting the, the regulations as a reference is no problem. It's a real easy thing to do. Uh -huh. um, but the evaluation instrument, I mean those principles of effective administration are minimums. Hopefully you develop a tool that's that cool. ratchets up the standards right. that's above so that's why we were happy just to yeah. get those. <laughs> so we would have been happy okay. to get those in the past. But adding that legal reference is not a problem whatsoever. Okay, we'll do that then. Um the next one is the organizational chart. I don't know if that's in your CCA. I don't know if we actually copied it. Line and staff relations. Line and staff relations. No, it's actually one before that. <coughs> this, yeah, that. Is. this is 0506. It really shouldn't be in the policy book. This was in the old policy book. Right. Okay. Because it, it changes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, right. it, it, it was actually written for a, a different report. I don't know yeah. why it ended up there. Okay. It was probably in the information that we gathered when yeah. we first looked at it. I created it, so um, I, but I can't remember what report <laughs> I put it into. <laughs> Probably the EQA you, on it. No, it wasn't EQA. Yeah, it was something last it. year. <laughs> <laughs> they found it. Yeah. But could you help me find my It's also on my computer. <laughs> could you help me find my Robert Rule of Orders pocket card? <laughs> um, line of staff relations. Okay, it's just mm. establishing the chain of command. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Can I, I know this is picky, but can we call it? The chain of command. We, we oh. often and oh, whatever you want. If, mm -hmm. no, 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 not in the title, but somehow reference that our expectation is that we will respect and want to follow the chain of command. Um, and I so would instead like of to established see lines of authority, establish chains of command. Authority and chains of command. Authority. Wait, wait, wait. It says your but third paragraph. It's actually, pretty good. Top sentence. Third paragraph. Lines of says, authority will serve most purposes. I'm sorry, Jen. We've all said three different things. So where would you like me to look? <laughs> I was looking at the first line of the third paragraph. Mm -hmm. It is expected mm -hmm. that the established lines of authority will serve most purposes. That's, that's also here too. Okay. Right. And yeah. the fourth paragraph says lines of authority as well. So, do you want to say line? And, you don't want to say lines of authority or? Why? What's wrong with it? Oh, yes. I think it's okay. That's fine. Okay. Um, do we want to mention parent relationships, or do we? It's a does this, it appears yeah, elsewhere. Yes. Okay. That's my. Uh, mm -hmm. That's probably more. Yeah. Um, administrative councils, cabinets, and committees, these are those groups established by the superintendent to look at different or variety right. of task forces. Like so updating curriculum. And it's yeah. fine. Right. Right. Yeah. I had a question about that. The last paragraph, should it should school committee be added or it is a separate, you just want this to be the superintendent when it says expenses incurred by such groups, um, blah, 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 but only within budgetary allotments and when approved in advance by the superintendent. Shouldn't that include school committee as no, well? No, because that's the budgetary allotment. Yeah. You've, okay. you've allocated the funds we, we to the budget it, and then okay. she and ahead, Ultimately, she when the expense piece, the, the warrant mm -hmm. comes up, we'll be you'd be signed. approving it yeah. that way. But with this is saying approved in advance by the superintendent, meaning the group can't go out and go do visitations and then send the bill to the superintendent later. Okay. So yeah. you've got to get the okay, okay beforehand. Okay. 
I have no problem with this page, but I find it really um, to say uh, to over the top to say councils, cabinets, and committees. I think it's fine just to say, you know, councils and committees. I, I think ca cabinet well, throughout the, is just. Yeah, the, the, the personally, I would have, I would have just said committees. Of, like Middleborough, committees. everything's a cabinet in Middleborough. Yeah. yeah. Everything. Well, this is mm. also to tweak to Foxborough. Yeah, absolutely. So, so you, so you if know if what? You, cabinet is just doesn't. If you don't use it, then is, take it out. Yeah, I think cabinet well, should be taken out. And, so councils want, in committees? Councils, we have school councils where we confuse people. It's really committees that we do here. Sometimes less is more. It's plainer to we me and very clear if it says committees. School yeah. We have so school councils. So just want to say administrative committees? Yeah. Yeah. I, councils and administrative committees. Well, we're not referring to, is this policy referring to school councils here? No. 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 So that's why, that's why it's very confusing to me. I would rather say administrative committees. I think it's clearer. All right, so where are we inserting? We're, we're going to change in the title. In the title. Move up. We're going to take out all the cabinets. Administrative committees. Okay, administrative committees. And then what do we do with the words? Okay. Deleting the words councils and cabinets from yeah. when it has all three of them together. Yeah. yeah. Councils, cabinets, and. Okay. All right. So that goes out a couple of times. Are there any bonus here? Yes. Yes, here. I've got some. Implementation of school committee policies and then this policy implementation, the Foxborough version. And the okay, I have, another, I have another quick question about that one, the last sentence in that last paragraph. Superintendent shall exercise administrative prerogative with the understanding that he or, shall, he or she shall bring the matter. Okay. Why does it say if appropriate? You're saying if it's going to become no, a policy? This is your policy. Oh, oh God. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> I did the okay. same thing, Katie. Okay, so obviously, okay. And then, <laughs> okay. All right, so you're on the so Foxborough yeah, one? Yeah, I'm on the Foxborough one. I didn't, so I didn't like that. Yeah, yeah. right. We, actually, we separate one. administration in the absence of policy. It, it's a whole separate file. Okay. You've been, this is incorporated into the implementation. Yeah. It's really not where it belongs. Okay. Let me okay. just ask a, a question about this, your version on the mask. It's, it's very clear to me here, second paragraph, consequently, consequently is expected that all school committee employees and students will carry them out. Mm -hmm. um, it says here in the last paragraph, administrators and supervisors responsible for informing staff members in their schools, departments, or divisions of existing policies and regulations and foreseeing that they are implemented in the spirit intended. Now, a controversy came up last, I guess, two years ago, because the school committee put in a new policy regarding computer usage okay. and was requiring all employees to sign. Um, acknowledgement or receipt or compliance with the policy and that if they didn't their computer access would be taken away from them mm -hmm. and there were several people uh, several employees who didn't want to sign it and said I'm required to adhere to all school committee policies I don't have to sign for any other policies why do I have to sign my name on this particular policy so there was some discussion around that and I thought it might be appropriate in the in the internet usage policy, the policy stated that everyone will sign and acknowledge the rules mm -hmm. for internet right. access, so by not signing the form, you were not following the policy. Right, but the... Right. But I could turn this argument but, but, but the admit, but I guess what I was trying to simplify, yeah. the, admit, the individuals that work for the school system said, I already have a requirement in your right. policy to comply with all your policies. Right. Why do you need to write in a policy that in addition to acknowledging I need to comply, on this one particular one I need to sign it, that it seemed redundant to them. I, I'll, I'll answer that with a question. Why do you require students to acknowledge receipt of the handbook? I don't know. Do we? Yes. Yes. That's okay. what they're yes. signing. Yes. They're yes. signing that they've received the rule. Mm -hmm. right. When so you, you sign for the internet policy, right. you're signing that you've been presented the policy. Right. So why not then have them sign acknowledgement for all the policies? In other words, if you're going to if you're going to put a policy in going forward, that they have to acknowledge it, mm -hmm. then why would you pick one policy to acknowledge and not another policy, or some policies and not others? Shouldn't there be some consistency? That was the question the employees were raising. Mm -hmm. it's and you could say, well, the policy is quite clear. In this one case, we said you had to sign it, mm -hmm. but they were trying to they were trying to understand the logic behind it mm -hmm. and whether or not what we were doing was consistent or inconsistent or whether we should be doing something differently. So I just raise that now because 
it kind of comes up underneath this particular policy? Um, the reason that you're asking them to acknowledge the internet policy is mainly because that's, there's been so many issues there. Right. And the, the first argument is, well, I didn't, I didn't, I was never told that. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Um, so that's why, just as you asked the parents and students to sign the handbook so that they can't later say, well, I was never made aware of that, and then you pull out the form that right. isn't that your signature. But isn't that true um, of any policy that someone could say, well, I never received that? Yeah, policy, but, you know, you know the, the, issue, the issues haven't come up on all the, on all the this argument has been used on all the other policies. Well, I don't disagree that that yeah. particular policy was unique in itself because of the problems that it led to mm -hmm. that policy being written, that, that because of the uniqueness, but I'm not sure that it was fully explained to the employees from that standpoint, and the few that had a problem felt that it was it was redundant and inefficient and ineffective to do that. Um, and one of the persons uh, that had his, his computer access taken away said, fine, take it away. It doesn't matter to me. Um, but the, another person, it, it meant they were going to lose their job. So they had to decide what was more important to them, the principle of not signing it or losing their job. Mm -hmm. um, so it just it seems to me it raises the question that I've been told that there are many employees, including administrators, who have never read the policy book from cover to cover. So I just raised the issue that says, when we come up with the new policy manual and we approve it as is, we should probably give it to at least every administrator and ask them to sign an acknowledgement that they have received and read the policies of the school committee. At a minimum, all administrators sh should probably sign a receipt of the new policies. Now, whether or not you'd want to ask every employee, I don't know, but at least every administrator. But that would again be our practice, and that's a good one for us to discuss, and that may be a good practice, but do you think that really needs to be written in the policy? Well, I'm not, I'm, I'm just talking well, about Well, that would probably be in the dissemination. Yeah. You, have, you, have a, you have a section later on in here about um, creating handbooks um, that are based for on, for employees, mm -hmm. students and employees, yeah. uh, based on the policies so that they, for the employees to carry out right. uh, the policies. Um, I don't know whether a kindergarten teacher needs to read all the policies, but I think it would be imperative that a teacher read all of the, the, hand, the handbook right. in, in the same way that we have the students mm -hmm. do it. Right. So if the handbook is properly written, to reflect the policies of the school committee would be, might be something that you consider to have them sign that instead. But every principal should read the school I committee policies. I don't disagree with that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I just bring it up for the committee to think about as we yeah. work through this process. That's one of the administrative steps we should mm -hmm. think through to make sure that we're disseminating it in a way yeah. that's appropriate. Before we move on, uh, the second paragraph of policy implementation, the last line, it says that all school committee employees and students will carry them out. Do you really mean all school committee employees, or do you mean all school employees? Where are you yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's yeah. what I had to. Yeah, you have Technically, all the employees. employees of the school district are employees of the school committee. Oh, really? Oh, okay. okay. So, you, the, it's your committee. It's your, it's your employees. It's your employees. Uh, a little confusing, though. I, I do understand that. It's just, mm -hmm. I would have said, oh, you school, say employees all school employees and students. And students. Right. That's, right. Again, it's, 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 you don't have to think about it. It's very clear. Okay. And we eliminated the Foxboro one, right? Uh, yes. yes. Okay. Development of regulations. This is the, the how part. Mm -hmm. Policy is the what's going to happen. The regulations are the how. Any questions? No. Uh, just ex uh, are we going to put in all handbooks? I may know. All handbooks or just the high school? Will be reviewed and approved annually. Are we as a, as a committee going to review all handbooks or just the high school annually? Which one are you looking at? On? Oh, you're on yes. the next one. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Development <laughs> of the regulations. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I mean, skip. Did we need that one? I thought you, this is ours, but you're. What? No, development, development of the regulations. regulations. CHA. CHA. Okay. That's the one you said. Do you have any questions? Yeah. D regulations, yeah. please define. So it's procedures. Uh... 
Again, regulations is not the right word to me. I didn't understand it. If they're procedures, then we should say they're procedures, or are they regulations? Good choice. Regulations imply their state mandated or some legal mandate as opposed to ourselves. So I guess I would agree with Kate. Can you change that to procedures in both places? Right. Okay. Again, if somebody were to ask me, uh, we're writing this, so somebody would say, okay, what do we were thinking? Yeah. I still could not tell you what the word regulations. So the uh, uh, word regulations right there is together. to procedures. And then also in the bottom paragraph, yeah. right. it's we're going to have to be through the whole book this week. The general term always used as regulations. So I think I caught most of them. We'll keep going. <laughs> so you're going to change the title? There's yes, 87, uh, Kate, and you're only up to 49, so. <laughs> Now, wait a minute. Uh, development of I'm procedures? So sorry, yeah, yeah. These. <laughs> so it's going to be procedures here throughout. Yes. Okay. School committee review of procedures. Right. Um, what was the question you raised on handbooks here? Are we saying all handbooks or just the high school handbooks? Currently, what we do is, uh, it's my understanding that we um, review um, annually the high school handbook. Um, the elementary, we review as they feel a need to refresh and bring them up to date. It's done district-wide, the three elementary schools. Mm -hmm. we ha we ha um, but it, as this policy reads, then are we doing all handbooks on an annual basis or just the high school? Well, if there's no changes, that's it's kind of... There's, there's nothing to review. Yeah, you're not going to look at so it. So you're only you're only really reviewing the changes to the books. Okay. So if there are no changes presented. Okay. So can we say changes standards of conduct? Changes to these hand, handbooks will be reviewed and approved annually by the school committee. Okay. The handbooks will be reviewed. All changes to the handbook, because that's what we're saying. We review. That's the only thing that's brought to us is the changes. You're not going to. So, do you want us to read the handbooks or? I think well, all changes. Just the changes. Just the changes. Okay. When I read this, it says we all should be changes. doing something. Maybe we're not really doing. Should, if okay. It's, it, so it's all change. The, the, all the, changes the, to the handbooks. What Jim is just yeah. All, so okay. they say all changes to the handbooks. So then you really should take out annually then, because all changes whenever they are. Well, whatever yeah. happen annually though. The yeah, but see, the, yeah, the, the, yeah, handbook, the high school so handbook is yeah. brought to us yeah. so before it's published. It's okay. fine. Right. Um, what did we do in B? Regulations, yeah, dissemination. Regulations. Oh, 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 oh. uh, Procedure seeking. Uh, I don't know what they're on. Are right. we keeping this? This is, oh, this is mask. Yep. Um, just tell me what it means so I'll know what the correct title is. All right, I'll have to go back into Section B and make that change as well. Okay. For which? For this school committee review of no. regulations. I'll have to change it in procedures to Section B, too. Right. What is regu regulations dissemination? Proceed sending them out. Um, again, we're using procedures now. Mm -hmm. Procedures dissemination. I don't, like, I don't like it. I don't like the policy at all. But I'm, I'm sure. Jim's well, with this, the statement that. here is that the procedure concerning a particular group of groups in the schools will be distributed to the groups prior to the effective mm -hmm. date of the procedure. Mm -hmm. So it's letting somebody know prior to. Right. 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 Okay. That's okay. the. You, you need yeah. it. That's you the need statement it. there. Oh, yeah. okay. Handbooks. Mm -hmm. Um, again, the, well, oh, before yeah, handbooks, again, it says publicate second paragraph, okay. last sentence, therefore the committee expects handbooks requiring approval to be approved prior to publication by the committee and or the superintendent. So, right, so when is, you make changes, we have to approve. All right. So I that's had underlined the way it. it is. Okay. okay. 
And then the approval of Hamburg, the, the dash E mm -hmm. document, um, th this was put in there because of the requirements of 7137H about suspension and expulsion yeah. of students under uh, dangerous weapons, drug and alcohol, so whatever. Because um, your handbook has to contain this language. And these yeah. will be discussed at Monday's meeting, correct? Yes. Yeah. Right. That's right. Yeah. So, you need to add alcohol to number one. Or is alcohol a controlled substance? It's this is this is actually right out of the, the law. Okay. The law. So that no, because it's not alcohol is not illegal. It is under twenty one. Mm -hmm. But. Yeah, that's but different. It's, 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 it's it doesn't have the same connotation. Yeah. I love that it says may be subject to. I mean, it's yeah. wonderful. It extends it. Yeah. It's right. wonderful. Under night, uh, item three, the uh, second line there, after two above all, above shall be notified in writing of their opportunity for a hearing, provided, however, that the student may have representation. Is that a typo there, or is that really how the law was written? Provided, however, that the student may have representation, along with the opportunity to present evidence and witnesses at said hearing before the principal. That's pretty exact. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the legal. That's the legal. So that's the legal. Yeah. That's how yeah. legally is written. Yeah. Yeah. That's right from that general so right. Is there a time on number four? Have the right to appeal. Uh, it's not the, the time limit's not in the. Um, the law. It's not in the law. Have it here within. Yeah. It's, is it in the handbook? It's in our handbook. Uh, so shouldn't we put it in here? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And I should know because we've dealt with Well, my question is, is where these statements are in your handbooks, right. do you then need them here? Because you Since said the handbook. Again, the, the policy is the big broad thing and then the handbook mm -hmm. is right. just the implementation. And these are in your, in, in your handbook. So, right. so you're yeah. saying we don't need the mask? Not in your policy manual. Then let's eliminate approval of handbooks and directives. The exhibit, the dash E. You want to get rid of that? Oh, wait. No. I no. Misunderstood. Jim, did you say, we? you just said we don't need this. What I'm no, saying is that this language is in your handbooks. Okay. All right? So do you need it in both so places? So the question is, do you want it in both places? I do. Did you say? What, the, the first sign line, I think, says, notwithstanding any general specific law, to the contrary, all student yeah. handbooks shall contain the following provisions. So all we're doing is stating that it needs to be in there. I don't think we have to spell out per se, because what we're saying is it's in the handbook. This just references that they have the right to appeal. So, you know, don't be so specific, because what if you change the handbook? So if you leave it the way it is, the handbook will cover it. Right. So exactly you said right. the handbook supersedes. I got it. No. See, that's, <laughs> that's it. exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. Collective bargaining agreement supersedes policy. Yeah. Okay. Change the Whatever you voted yeah. last, yeah. that's, yeah. that's always going left. to be yeah. the more, more more difficult. Right okay. And you forget about, about it. You forget about so the you, policy. If you make a change to really the handbook really and you don't change the policy, yeah. if you voted to approve the handbook change, that's what's going to happen. Yeah. Okay. Okay. This has the substance. This is where we have administration in the absence of policy. Okay. okay. We keep it separate mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. keeping it with that one other paragraph, you might not, never find it if right. you're looking for it. Administrative reports. I'm going to come to this section. Is that a question what you meant about reports that require reports from the superintendent concerning conditions of efficiency? Are you referring to like the district improvement um, plan or just what okay. that just kind of covers okay. everything? Okay. That could be it, yeah. It could be okay. financial reports. Okay. It could be anything that's Okay. So again, this can be more general. Yeah. It doesn't, okay. Um, school district annual report. Well, that in was, the top one. Can we do a with the bottom one? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Good job. Hi. Okay, Paul, it's all On to be. D. Again, first policy is always a level sole objective mm -hmm. kind of statement. In this particular area, I think there's only there was only one box for a policy. 
Yeah, this is one that's been nitrogen yeah. for a long time. Yes, yeah, 16 out of 17 we did not have. I have no problem with DA as okay. it's uh, 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 except um, it says, <laughs> first paragraph. You can't start off with, I have no problem okay. with. I have two, two, one question and okay. uh, actually two questions. Okay. First paragraph, achieve through excellent fiscal management. Uh, it's, it, to me, no one uses that phraseology. It's really sound fiscal okay. management, and that's very consistent with what our message is. Okay. Um, Anybody okay with that? Is, uh, sure. And right. the second is, if uh, Paul sound? Jackson's comfortable with this, then I'm comfortable with this. So I just... I would like to ask Paul, because as I read this section, it seemed okay, but it wasn't tailored enough to Foxborough, and I think there's some very specific things we do that we really should capture here. Uh, and uh, So I'd like to get Paul's input as we go along. I'm fine with this. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I'm fine with that. Annual budget. What, what about under your note? Reference to portions of a town, city, and shot of are, are you saying preface it in there or add I'm it? just saying if you wanted to include the section in the town charter that had the February 1st date in it, this would be a good place to put I, it. I, I would put it in because okay. then it, mm -hmm. it spells it out in the policy. I just had a question about, you talk about the superintendent. Where? Well, in that paragraph, paragraph, in the pa last paragraph, I'm just wondering how the business, how we incorporate the business manager into this, or do we not? I'm sorry. We well, the, the business manager is responsible to the superintendent. Right. right. So no, ultimately, really, as far as your policy is concerned, it should say it's okay. the superintendent's okay. responsibility. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I just didn't know. Just, just, just for policy portions. purposes. I'm sorry. Right. He or she may delegate for Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, budget deadlines and schedules. So this is where we need to capture the uh, the, the charter reference. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And the way we really do it. And you have some changes here? Well, I scribbled the areas that I correct, so. All right. Mm -hmm. So, we're so we should end up Foxborough time, timeline. Yeah. Right. This is the second Monday in, in May, not the last one. Yeah. It's not the finance committee, it's the advisory committee. Right. So yeah. Paul can give you the exact um, changes we need to do in this one. All right. Okay. okay. Budget planning? Not a single red mark. <laughs> Just want to make sure Paul, Paul's comfortable with it. Okay, comfortable. <laughs> Budget adoption procedures. Tell me. Okay. You're, you're going to read. Yes. What Martha has been asking, I agree with. You're going to continue to. I'm just waiting to get a copy of the right. okay. uh, Budget transfer authority. This is where um, I think we need to make reference to the monthly report we get. What Paul does this monthly report, and he shows us all of the. Um, line items that he wants to transfer and then the committee approves it all at one time so that we in the past transfers hadn't been approved um, on a line by line item and now we get to see all the detail and we get to approve it so we ought to write this Paul uh, in line with the way you're doing it today. Well if he's not the business manager 10 years down the road? Well if we're happy with the way it's being done then that ought to be okay. the process. So that should be the practice. Okay. Right. And if you're not happy, we could pull, we should make the change now. Okay. So Paul's going to add some to this. Yes. Okay. How, how this monthly report should be presented to the school committee to identify, to identify transfers uh, between budget lines. See, the reason why this is important is the committee had a debate in the past as to did the committee was the committee required obligated by law to approve all transfers. Only large transfers, and, and, and there was just lots of discussion on that. So that's why we designed this report that Paul now uses, right. so the committee gets to see everything. Monthly reports will be. So you get. I'll, I'll is Larry? Okay. We do it via monthly reports, but right. is it for policy? Is it important to say the monthly reports, or it's important to say the fact that those line items must be submitted to us for approval? Well, I think in giving you a monthly statement. You can statement, tie two, both pieces of that You can tie it both yeah. together. And make right. a clear. Yeah. 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 Right. Right. saying that if you say it in a monthly report, then, right. then 
whoever that which, they, if they yeah. call leaves, you still have a month. And see, you started to identify which identify the you know those items right. recommended. The yeah. school committee approved for transfer. Oh, so, yeah. And again, just to get back to Martha's point, the way we the way we approached it as a committee, and if the committee wants Good. to change Good. it, we should change it here in the policy. But you know, rather than have um, in a in a in a category ten sub categories. Paul reports to us at the category level, and we mm -hmm. haven't said as long as that category doesn't move, it's okay. But if he moves within one or two subcategories, it doesn't it doesn't matter to us. So right. his report isn't of every single line item that was that's mm -hmm. in the budget. It's the major budget categories, which is what we're approving um, at the beginning of the year. We're sending to town meeting, um, and um, so do you take separate votes on each of the? No, we took. Category, a, or do you take a vote which recognizes the, the oh, motion is yeah. total one thousand series yeah. of whatever two thousand three thousand. Right. It's to take the report when he proposes the budget. It's by major category. <laughs> at you know, the very end, we've now ironed it out. It's down by category, uh, and it ties out in this case to twenty-two million or something. And we make the motion to approve that document yeah. in its entirety. So it's a it's it's a summary I'm looking at it, I'm thinking, by category. No, I'm just trying to I'm trying to apply the DOR interpretation to voting bottom lines, and I don't think that's what you're doing. I don't think you're voting a bottom line. You're doing a you're approving it's a, a form as presented, yeah. mm -hmm. and the form has category breakdown right. on it. So yeah. I think you're okay. Yeah. Because okay. what the DOR is interpreted, and this is causing a lot of problems for some districts, is that. When they vote the budget, they just simply vote a total dollar amount. Right. The school committee. Right. When you vote the budget, you just simply the motion is twenty-two million, right. whatever, and they interpret that as every single line item, as is, because you made no effort to break it out any other way. Right. So, they what they would then interpret that, even those transfers in the category, right. you'd have to approve. Right. You know. But when we approve it by, by because by you're doing it by subcategory. You've established cost centers. Right, that's correct. So as long as the transfer is within the cost center, that's okay. Right, and that's the way we designed right. it that way to make it easier right. for Paul and easier for the committee so we're not in the minutiae. So that heating oil money is not being spent somewhere else. It isn't well, spent Textbook before. money right. isn't being spent in heating correct. oil or right. without approval. That's right. correct. Okay. Yeah. So I think if you, by, by saying you're approving the form, I, right. I think you're, you're meeting the guideline there. Okay. Uh, this is the one Fox will call applications for projects to be funded by outside sources. Does that mean grants? I don't think it just means grants. It also uh, means um, like events to set other right. companies, et cetera. Do we leave that or get there? Well, there's a, there is an MASC version of it, but. It's the next question. The question well, is which we... one do you like better? Actually, I liked our policy better on that one. Okay. Um, Does it reflect practice? Well, my only question for Paul is that do we have, um, should we put in some kind of time frame or when the last sentence there is the superintendent shall annually inform the committee? Is there a set time frame when we do it? It was pretty much as we went along, but. Yeah, annually seems very broad. Um, we don't want to know. Well, what is wrong with the mask policy, though? Oh, the new one. I think it's a little well, I don't, but, and plus it starts Massachusetts federal law. No, we can add those references yeah. to your document. Why don't we go with the new one? Oh. The new one doesn't have time frame, does it? No, I wrote time too. It doesn't. I, mean, I think it's important to have that. I put that on there. Yeah. Yeah. But maybe the way you could handle the timeline mm -hmm. is to put a statement in that uh, we've been bringing gifts to the committee, and yeah. as part of bringing the gifts to have the committee accept the gift, there's a discussion about what the gift would be used for. So that at that point, you're understanding what's happening with the funds. The one thing about your policy that's not in ours is the authorization for the school committee chair to sign on behalf of the committee. If you don't have that in there, then the authorization doesn't exist, and you'd, you'd actually have to vote to grant it to her, or whoever the chair is, the chairman. The chairperson. The chair, well. We, had, we understand. Yeah. So, that's the one thing that's in your policy that if you, if you don't keep your policy, then you'd put in yours. We could either cut and paste it over onto ours or whoever, but that's an important piece. I think if that's your practice. Martha, you've been the chairman for this last year. Have you signed anything? Nope. Jan, should she have signed anything? No. 
Okay. I don't think we should have it. So this Plus is the implication grants. for committee appropriation. So these are like typically the matching grants. Right. Like yeah. if we give you $1,000, you have to match it with $1,000 from yeah. your appropriation. So before those applications go in, and what we have done is we took routinely brought them to the entire school. Yeah, right. I think right. bringing them to the entire community. Right. So that's that's right. Right. We should go with this yes. one first. All right. Okay. So, so what, what about that last uh, paragraph on the Foxborough one? Annually informed. Yeah. Just, do does like the committee it. feel that you should be told all the time? You just annually. You do. It's it's just just I'm, I'm afraid that if you put in annually, yeah. you know, it would allow somebody to say, "Well, I'll just wait till the end of the year and tell you about it." No, I think you're going to leave it. You say correct. Ongoing. Leave it the yeah. other way around. Is but I mean, is that included in the new one? That's what I'm. No, no. Because it, when somebody gives us something, it's brought right up. It's not okay. We'll just keep right. informed of all possible. Right. Right. Okay. That's yes. what okay. It says. Okay. And keeping, okay. Right. keeping you informed okay. all along. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No. I, I agree. I was just trying to find where that was. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Do uh, does the chairman of the school committee sign payroll warrants? No. Okay. I, yeah. Do we put this in there because some town charters require it? That's all. So, so we don't have. Why don't you put your school committee or the superintendent? Because if it's under Massachusetts general law, how is how does the law come into play? Well, who signs? Is it the payroll? They don't sign the payroll warrant. No. At, the town doesn't require that the majority of the committee sign payroll. Good. Yeah. So the superintendent will sign when payroll is presented. Okay. So we take out the school. school just are, are we sure there's no requirement within the town that we've just yeah. been ignoring? When I get the town, when I get a copy of the mm. town charter, Paul's requested a couple, double check, couple it. Times double check it, but we have. But Mass General Law doesn't require it. It's local. It's no. local. Oh, you just put that in. Well, it's the uh, the town treasurer part that that's referencing the treasurer. Part. Oh, okay. Because regional schools employ a treasurer. Oh, okay. So. okay. Uh, but we don't have to include anything with region. It mentions no, region. No. no. Uh, bonded employees and officers. This does happen. Okay. Okay. Yep. Fiscal accounting and reporting. This says periodic financial mm -hmm. statements. This might be a place to reemphasize the monthly. Mm -hmm. If you That's wanted to thinking. put monthly there. Yeah. Do we want to put monthly instead of periodic? If you leave it periodic, if you ever get to the point that you say, you know, every two months is sufficient mm -hmm. for a policy, you're good. Right. You know, yeah. Yeah. then we don't right. have to change yeah. the policy. You know, it'd be best to leave it alone. Sometimes being too specific is not, yeah. Yeah. not the right way to go. There's really no point right. in giving you one in July, August, and yeah. beginning of September. There hasn't been enough activity that so can't really show you much. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, last, that last sentence, uh, the last paragraph, um, financial statements as may be determined necessary by either the committee or the administration will be presented as found desirable. Could we just say will be presented as needed? Or ask sure. the question. Yeah. Where are you? The you last, the last found two words is found desirable to needed. I'm sorry, Beverly. As needed or request? Oh, needed. As needed. As, as needed, needed and or request. Well, because that would needed. be yeah. needed would be upon request. Yeah. Okay. Audits. You gotta love the code for audits. I know. I thought that die, <laughs> die, die, die. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> you are die. Yeah. Should we also have any? I mean, the committee will consider recommendations made by the auditor for maintaining an efficient system for recording. The, we we haven't received anything from the auditors as they've done their audit of the town. Paul, don't you get something when they? Audit at the end of the year from the state. I get an I get a copy of the audit for the end of the year report. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's submitted. And then there's an audit report that the auditor provides for all of time all of the time records that goes to the audit committee. Mm -hmm. But we don't get that. We didn't. We haven't got it in the last year. If we want a copy of it, we we should. Well, this is saying you will get a right. copy of it. Okay. Right. Well, then that's. Good. Well, but you just can't write in your policy we should get a copy of it without notifying the audit committee and yeah. others that we want a copy of it, or the town manager. Yeah, but if he gets a copy of it, why can't he copy his copy? Well, I can certainly make a copy of the... Copy he gets. Yeah, which is of the end of the report. Yeah, I'm just saying we ought to let the town manager and the audit committee know that we want to be part of that, showing good fiscal... Okay. Responsibility on our part. That's a good idea. The question I asked is 
do we need to mention that just that? Um, I, I would like, you know, Paul Jackson, you and Larry, and if necessary, if you two think it's necessary to, to talk with Randy Scollins and Andy Gala to see if this is if this is the way we want to do the audit right. procedures. I'm yep. not sure that it's... And we should, we should ask Randy his view as the town accountant on the financial piece of this, and if it's, is there anything else he would like to see us in, in here? Okay. Just his thoughts. Doesn't mean we have to agree to it, but uh, we've, we've reached out so much with uh, the town side I just think it would be appropriate to share with Randy on the on the finance piece, and if there's anything else he could think of that we should have. So we're all in agreement. We like it. We'll keep it, but we want to have input from um, Paul and Larry, um, yeah. as well as Randy Scollins and Andy Gala. Is that mm -hmm. what we're saying? Sure. Who's going to do that? Paul and I can coordinate that. Purchasing. Fine. Pretty straightforward. Yeah. Purchasing authority. Is that good? Mm -hmm. Do we have to put in uh, the school committee will vote to approve all bids as required by Mass General Law? I wrote down 3 B or do we have to put that line like that in there or is it unnecessary? Why wouldn't you want it then? Just let people know that you have to do it. I, that was my line I wrote, I, and I'm not sure I'm correct. That's why I'm Where did you put it? We're on purchasing authority, right? Yep. At the end, I put, last paragraph, the school committee will vote to approve all bids as required by Mass General Law 30B. Do we need to? Do we want to spell that out as well? Well, it's in the next page. Yeah. Bidding requirement. Yeah. So it covers it. Seems pretty straightforward. Right, and this would conform. Yeah. When we talk to Randy and Andy, we'll make sure this is all in conformance with video as well. Okay. Will you do that, Larry? Or? Paul or I will do it, yes. I'm not even sure this is up to date anymore, is it? Which? Well, I'm not sure that the, this is up to date anymore. On the bidding requirements? Yeah. Yeah. Which mm -hmm. one? The 25,000. There's some. Uh, I'd have to go back and look. Well, the, the changes on uh, construction. It's a forty thousand dollars construction price. Okay. Under uh, the new SBA regulations, it's like one forty something, one forty nine. Yeah. Okay. We're okay with records. Vendor relations. Well, um, this is our policy, and vendors. Um, no, no. no. Oh, no. 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 public schools. I'm looking the wrong way. Yeah. <laughs> um, I believe I understand your intent. My question is: Do we need to put in any EEO statement or conflict of interest again in business or industry, any other organization outside of education, when they talk about purchasing policy, that they will reference that conflict Absolutely. of interest in vendors? So, if we're going to have a vendor policy, is that something? Uh, I'm sure it's probably not in the Mass General Law, or you would have cited it. But do we, as a group, want to um, uh, mention that? I think we do. I, I agree with you, Kate. So what are you going what to are you add? thinking up, Kate? I just put down, I mean, it's the standard, Larry, it's the standard um, boilerplate that's used, um, talking about um, uh, our uh, purchasing agent will, um, and we don't have a conflict of interest policy for our uh, employees, so you can't quite refer to that. But, we, but you can refer to the 268A provision in the conflict of interest statute. Right. Okay. That we will adhere to yeah. our pr right. uh, so why not purchasing, reference, reference the statute yeah. okay. for conflict of interest. So we're going to okay. reference the statute? I, I think we have an opportunity here to also make a claim that we will deal with vendors who, in fact, um, uh, have an EEO statement of non-discrimination. I mean, that's standard for most companies are required by law. I don't, again, why schools are not held to, but we have an EEO policy and this mm -hmm. is another opportunity to be saying that right, in terms of other vendors. Okay. So I would like those two references. Mm -hmm. Do we have sure. a, um, 
the EEO and I want the conflict of interest okay, yeah, reference yeah, yeah, yeah. and the EEO statement non discrimination. I wrote EEO and yeah. I wrote non discrimination. Yeah. Does that go on this page? We can add as a legal reference to it, which is okay. fine. Cro then we can cross reference to the non discrimination policy. Um, well, the point is that we're going to deal, that the purchasing agent will, in fact, deal with those individuals who are, in fact, um, EEO. We're setting a standard, mm -hmm. and we're, we're communicating to anyone who looks at this the standard we want. I understand that, but just simply putting a reference to uh, e, the uh, equal, uh, well, actually, what you know, which would be the non-discrimination piece. Um, just EEO. It doesn't have to say non-discrimination. I hope it's a yeah. word. I'm sorry. Just EEO. We, we will only deal with vendors who, in fact, um, but, have an equal opportunity. And I understand. But by simply putting as a, as a reference, EEO won't make that statement. So I think he, if you so, want that in there, you need to make the statement in there. That's fine. I'm, let me be clear. Okay. That's exactly the statement. I'd like that spelled out. So we had you word it? That we will um, only deal with vendors then, who are in compliance. No, I, I'm not. Non-discrimination, non-discrimination statements are required of all vendors. That's the way you got to phrase it, Jim, yes. because yeah. you want to make it so mm -hmm. that right. we um, proactively get the information, yeah. and yeah. it's the purchasing agent that would have to do that. This is going to be a very, very burdensome. I mean, there are educational type supplies that people pick up and put an order in for out of a catalog. And we're dealing at times with thousands of vendors, so that if somebody put in an order for a two hundred dollar item that they've identified out of a specialized educational catalog, we'd have to stop before we order it to go through and get statements mm -hmm. to this effect, and it's just going to slow everything down. What about one appropriate? So if it's a well, I good. certainly or do you want a value well, to Well, if you're going to go out for yeah. public bid. Yeah. You, 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 put it spec, you put that into the bid yeah. specification, but uh, there are but a lot of small dollars. Yeah. It's going to become gonna very be burdensome. Good. But this vendor relations, as I'm reading this, I look at this as more a statement that you're not going to force people to deal with different salesmen that walk through the door 50 times a day. Right. Where the purchase, right. so the EEO, uh, those types of things, I would think would be more in line with the purchasing authority, the bidding requirements to say these are the right. standards. Yeah. So yeah. should we go back and put that under yeah. bidding? Yeah. That, that, makes yeah, that makes sense. So you got to put that other comment under the bidding regulations and not under the bidding regulations. Yeah, and there's a, okay. bidding, there's a requirement when we do a public bid of a non-collusion statement that we mm -hmm. right. require okay. that's submitted as part of the package and we disqualify a vendor if they didn't. Okay. Well, so why don't you just take the actual procedure or process and Customize that to reflect it, which you're already doing. Okay. Payment procedures. If you look at this second paragraph, as an operating procedure, the committee will receive monthly lists of bills for payment from school department funds. The list will be certified as correct and approved by for a payment by the school committee and then forward to the city auditor. By the time found town finance director. And these lists, Paul, that we get that we approve, they're not certified from anybody. These are certified by the person who prepared them. Well, I don't <coughs> see any of their certifications, signatures on the bottom. We have some up here, I think, don't we, tonight? Yeah, there's no name on there. So, you know, again, we just, we want to, either we want to change the practice we have today or we want the policy to reflect the practice that we have today. What we do is we, we get the statements. If there's line items on there that you don't understand, it's our obligation mm -hmm. to go to Paul and say, explain to me what this item is. Mm -hmm. And we do that routinely. Um, but he's not certifying to us or as anyone else that everything there is as represented. But is this part of Massachusetts general law that they have to be certified? Um, I, I don't think it's. I, can, I don't think I can cite a specific section of the law as, as what this is. But it's typically those sound business practices that whoever prepares the warrant will s sign it, saying that the bills 
the bill is being presented, you've received the material, and they're being charged to accounts that have appropriate have funding available. They're, they're being charged to the appropriate accounts. So I guess my question would be, I don't have a problem with being certified, but we don't do that now. And number mm -hmm. two, should it be the business manager then that is making the representation to us that it's right, right accounts, right distribution, mm -hmm. right amounts, et cetera? business manager or the, or the superintendent, the rest of your policy all says it's the superintendent, not the business manager. Okay. Oh, and the superintendent would have to certify. Or at least initially. Right. Yeah. You want to get together with the rainy and we'll talk, because some of the procedural things that we're talking about and even the monthly budget statements that we've talked about that we're now using, I see changing with the new accounting system mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. and with modifying how about we add this to the list and we sit down okay. with Randy to come up yeah. with it. Yeah, we can do that. I, I've seen some school districts that include every one of the invoices as part of that package mm. so that you're not only signing it, but then you have the ability to flip them with the invoice. And in, uh, I guess two other districts that I'm aware of, the, uh, the superintendent actually initialed every invoice. I think that would that be a good part practice of, to yeah. have. Out of it, so. I don't see how many it would be like six thousand six thousand they're delegate. Or, or you know the designate. superintendent or, yeah, yeah, exactly. How many it's purchasers? Someone. Six thousand? Something like that? Yeah. Mm. But Paul and I signed all the POS is, is both both, yeah. both signatures are required on that as it is. It's just that it's not necessarily on the warrant centuries. Right. Okay. Last one, expense reimbursements. Now, I've not seen any come to the committee for approval. What are you talking Number two, any travel request with an estimated expenditure of more than X must be approved in advance by the mm -hmm. committee. But this is for the school committee, right? Or is this expense yeah. reimbursements for right. everyone? That's, that's, that's for personnel and school department officials. It implies. Right, so if it's somebody who's, who's take, going to a conference, right, and, yeah. right. and is traveling and will need. You already have a budget line that says, I mean, that this, would, so this, much, yeah. The, the, yeah. this would say, so if somebody goes out of town, you have to approve it, but you already have a budget line yeah. that you already have right. approved. But so. I think what this gets to is uh, there have been certain communities that have gotten into trouble mm -hmm. because the superintendent or the business manager went to a conference in Hawaii. Yeah. And people, <laughs> citizens <laughs> thought that that was outrageous. Oh, don't talk about that. Hawaii. <laughs> So I understand why it was there, but I'm just pointing out from a practical standpoint, yeah. we don't do that now. No. Well, the committee has to decide. We don't go to Hawaii, we don't do that. <laughs> so, Either. Okay. I think. so you can go to New Jersey for that conference. We're going to limit you to, to, to money and to money. Well, trust me, you don't have enough money in that line to send anybody to Hawaii. <laughs> and maybe not New Jersey, come to think of it. So is the feeling so, that we do need it or we don't need it? You're saying, Jan, you don't think we need it? I'm, I'm saying from a practice standpoint, we don't do it. Yeah. So, so we if, if we're going to keep the current practice, then you delete that. Well, the only thing is... You're going to keep like, it, you have to change the current right. practice. Right, wait a minute. When Mass sends us out a bulletin and it says how much money it is to go for the weekend, you know, what the prices are, then that's what you put in here. Yeah. And that's what, you, mm -hmm. what the superintendent would approve. Right. And in it, other words, when, you know, went to Hyannis, it was $149 a night and, you know, there was a meal, there was a package. That's what you would put in here, and that's what they would approve. I, I, think, a, I, I just think you ought to hold the superintendent responsible for yeah. approving it, right? One way or the other, as opposed to the committee. Yeah, right. why, why take it to the committee? I mean, hold it, hold that superintendent just responsible. Just simply say travel it, request period. must be approved by in advance by the superintendent. Right. Right. I agree. Okay. okay. And so we're saving it. So we are leaving it, and no, we're just leave it, it. Leave it in, but it's it, you, you're, you're going to change. No, you're taking out the line that says more than. So it's now going to be. It's just that it's all of it. Uh, any travel request must be approved in advance by the superintendent. Right. 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 Regardless of. Uh, so everything right. else is deleted. Right. Is that right. right. In that no. Nope. No, no, no. One, just in one's that line. fine. Just. It's not one. One's right. fine. Three's fine. It's just that number two has been changed. Right. So it's just everything's approved by the superintendent. First sentence to the second paragraph. All the superintendent responses. No. We actually have multiple rates that we pay. And then it, it says monthly travel statement and amount of salary will be paid to the assistant superintendent. I mean, is that part true? No, Did that's what I had flagged because I don't think that's we, don't have yeah. we have that. What I would say, if you change that to May instead of will, that's, I think, what we would want in case we ever 
need or choose to do that. Okay. That's a good idea. Okay. Right, That's because the new superintendent has right. chose not to accept that. Okay. And Paul, you're saying the, the first sentence of that paragraph, uh, we actually have several different rates that we pay. Uh, None of which are approved by the committee. Correct. And, right. uh, but there is a contractual rate in uh, teacher's contract. Which is different than the rate. Which you approve. Yeah. So we approve the contract, right? right. Mm -hmm. But not Paul's reimbursement as an example. The so way, yeah, whatever the, the rate that is. The different rates. Uh, Paul's contra rate different contractual rates. But where's if Paul's reimbursement would be what? In his contract? No, I don't think so. Is it in your contract? I've never put one in. But we, we have been historically reimbursing mileage yeah. at the IRS rate. Right. Which is the so way it probably ought to refer to. Right. Except where it has been. Because that goes up and changes. Right. Well, if you say the IRS rate and, the, and if the teacher's contract says something less. Well, you, couldn't you say either at, 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 at the applicable contractual rate yeah, or if not a contract, the IRS rate? Well, but if, if you just leave it as at the rate currently approved by the committee. Right. You have the committee approved different mm -hmm. rates at different places, and it's still just yeah. a big umbrella. Has the committee approved different rates at different places? I don't no. think they have. I, no, because we changed the rate we were reimbursing last year because the IRS rate went up considerably. Right, and it didn't come to the committee for approval. Mm -hmm. And if the IRS mm -hmm. changes their rate, why does it necessarily have to come to the committee? Yeah. If we've said we want to. Is the rate the teacher's contract higher than the IRS rate? Well, no. no. Like That's what I was rating. thinking. Is is you've got the, you know you've got the, the different contracts have refer to different rates. Superintendent's mileage rate, for example, is higher than teachers' mileage you put rate. Put in you'll establish a rate on the annual basis. And that would be something that um, for any any rates that are not part of a contract. Well, what I, I guess. We can say currently approved by the uh, Internal Revenue Service or established in collective bargaining agreements. I mean, we could set up. We could. We couldn't. We say that our policy is to um, either establish it in a contract, or if it's not in the contract, it would default to the IRS approved rate. Mm. Then we don't have to repute. Re see, if we if we say we want to re review it annually, then someone's got to remember to bring it to the committee yeah. annually. If they yeah. don't, we violate our own policy. Yeah. Right. So if our policy is it's either going to be in a contract or it's going to be according to the IRS, then that's very simple. And if it's in a contract, we'll get to approve the contract, so that's approved that way. And if it's not, and it's an isolated someone, then we're paying them at the IRS rate. That's what we're paying them now. Yeah. So you just want to yeah, I, that, keep it generic. The way that I was just reading it is as if the committee just agreed. You know, perhaps you need a line there that just says, you know, either and you have, you have already approved either contractually or. Uh, by the uh, the IRS uh, report. Martin? You say currently established in contracts, contracts or by the use the mileage effectively? The IRA. If they wanted a higher mileage, they'd have to come out of the salary. Piece. <laughs> or they would just take it out of their contract for the negotiation, and now you are obligated to give them the IRS, which is higher than they were having. Right. We don't, you know, if you. Since it's only a limited number of dollars, if you took all the teachers and gave them higher reimbursement, the money would have to come out of some other account. So they're currently satisfied with the rate they're being paid in their contract. Well, you'd have to agree to take that. I mean, that's that's part of the negotiation. They may offer that as a as correct. As, as, so, as, right. as an issue. You'd have to agree to it. That's so correct. Okay. So, so, so when it says approved by the committee, you approve the contract. That's correct. And that's the rate you're going by. Right. And that's it correct. might be the contract for the superintendent. It might be the contract for the for I, the teachers but I think so just say currently established is. in contracts or the current rate established by the internal revenue service I'm not I don't want to speak for Mr. Nevado but what he might have been referring to is if I'm a teacher and I'm getting 23 cents a mile per contract and the IRS is 60 cents next contract negotiation based on this policy I'm going to ask for 60 cents but if that's the case, then it becomes a discussion between the committee and the teachers because there's only a finite, finite number of dollars. And if you add in one pocket, you have to take away from another pocket. Sure. But, but once you introduce something that's not there now, i.e., the IRS pays more, so we're paying some people more than others, it will probably come up in the next round of negotiations as a result of that. So let's go back to Jan's original idea, which said, you know, as approved by, uh, 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 as approved by the committee. 
the rate so to be reimbursed right. is and approved then, by the committee. Well, just by saying it's approved by the committee, it's it approved it, by the committee, right? It's exactly what it says. Yeah. So, but once you once you start saying, yeah. you know, under this circumstance yeah. or with this one, open then, the then you just don't open the door. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. if you just yeah. leave it as it is, you're covered. Because you've already approved yeah. it in the contract. Well, yeah. I thought we were only going to eight thirty, so I'm probably not. Very good. Do we want to just look at one E just in the next five minutes so we feel good? Oh, <laughs> well, Michael Leary wanted me to give him a ten minute heads up and do the PDF, so let's, let's oh, show that. But it's eight twenty five. Right, so, so you can't get it by eight thirty. Okay. We're only gonna get, we're not gonna keep going. I didn't even bring you. Oh, let's <laughs> talk about it. We have it for the last time. I have I have notes all over it. I'll pass it on to someone else. Okay. I can't remember who's next. So when's our next meeting? It is June. June 8th. Friday, June 8th. Is that enough? You want more? Perfect. Okay. I don't usually carry cash. <laughs> Thank you. The next year. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we ever did. We'll tell you later. Yeah. You have it enough, right? I gave it to the last meeting. Oh, we can. We can you almost go here. right through F. No. But he doesn't have here. it. He didn't bring you didn't bring it. Yeah, he's got it. You've got it. He's got it. What? You've got an ENF. We do do, but he wasn't here last week, so he didn't bring it with him. Would we like to continue for a few more minutes, or we're saying well, F? F is so short. Mike wants to be here for F. So oh, Mike wants to be here. He needs ten minutes notice, so by the time he gets here, he'll be by himself. Okay. Keep your head going. Let's finish this. Yeah. Yeah. The answer to Larry's right. question is the next meeting is June 8th? Right. Yes. Okay. 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 And do you need a motion? June 8th. I can't make it. I'll make that motion. I'll okay. second. Katie will second. All those in favor? Aye. Motion to adjourn. I will have to leave my... Kate, okay. you made the motion and... Katie seconded. seconded. Okay.